Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh ta'ala. O oh, beloved brothers and sisters, mothers and elders, learned ulama and hafad, O oh, the salikin, the ones who are treading the path towards finding the love and the embrace of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by following the sunnah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Allah has granted us the opportunity of interacting with each other over the last few weeks, subhanahu ya Rabb. And in this time, we have spoken and discovered and unraveled much surrounding creating a sense of mind and the alignment between mind, so thoughts, the body, the soul, and subhanAllah, giving expression to all of this in the various forms of worship. We find ourselves with a little bit of time remaining before the beautiful month of Ramadan. In fact, the clock is ticking and we only have a little bit less than two weeks before Subhanak Ya Rabbi, we will be in the beautiful month of Ramadan. In fact, it could be that 14 or 13 evenings from now, we may be into the month of Ramadan already. So this evening, in two weeks time, may be the first evening of Ramadan and the first observance of Salat al-Taraweeh. Allahumma balighna Ramadan. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us the opportunity of being able to witness this Ramadan and inshallah many more Ramadans beyond that. What to talk about? Last week we chatted a little bit with regards to dua and how we can personalize, tailor make the dua so that it becomes this healthy discourse and conversation with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When we speak of the healthy discourse and conversation with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, let us remind ourselves up front that we may or may not have mentioned this is how we communicate to Allah by virtue of dua. And when we want Allah to speak to us, then we immerse ourselves in the recitation of Quran. For indeed, the Quran is the word of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And it's a living conversation that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has with us all the time. So inshallah today, we will discuss a little bit with regards to the relationship with Quran. But before that, a big part of the month of Ramadan is the idea of observing Siyam, observing the fast. Now, let's backtrack a little bit and appreciate this concept of fasting. It exists in many other aspersions and ways of life. People who follow Christianity, people who follow Judaism, people who follow Hinduism, people who follow different religions, different creeds, different belief systems, different uh, schools of spirituality have a concept of fasting. But ours is a little bit different. For them, there could be concepts like a fruit fast or a dry fast or a meat fast where they undertake for a period of time not to partake of certain food substances or alternately to only partake of a specific set of food substances. For us, subhanAllah, our fast is one where there's no partaking in any food or drink for that duration of time. You may argue that there are others who observe a fast similar to ours, where there's no intake of food or drink. What's the difference then between their fast and our fast? They also do it in the name of whichever deity they call upon. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made us from the moderate and the tempered ummah. That ummah that finds a sense of balance in everything that they do. For those who observe a fast similar to ours where there's no intake of food and drink, many a times this goes on for a period longer than even those in the ummah who are at the extremities. So we look at sometimes, you know, the North Pole and we look at the duration of the fast of those in those areas. Or for us, some of us, who may have friends and family, you know, in the United Kingdom and certain other countries as well. Sometimes the fast is 18 hours, 20 hours, 21 hours. Subhanallah. The fast of people out of the ambit of Islam is sometimes longer than 24 hours. But we appreciate that even those from the Ummah who are fasting a lengthier fast, there are times in their lifespans, so at other years, some six months or so later or six yeah when when ramadan moves to a different time of the year so if ramadan moves some six months earlier or later you would find and that would normally take approximately 18 years the same community who are observing a 
21 or 22 or 23 hour fast would now be observing a little bit more than a 9 or 10 hour fast. And that's part of the balance that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allow us to enjoy in our sharia. The question then begs to be asked, why is it that we fast? Is our fasting a deprivation of food and drink so that we starve our bodies? No. Our fasting, subhanAllah, as Muslims, is the best self-help, self-enrichment, self-development cause that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala provides for us. And guess what? Compared to every other one of those self-help, self-enrichment, self-development causes, those come at a price. This is for free. And beyond being a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity, like other self-help causes, this is an annual opportunity to every mu'min, to every mu'mina, to every believing male, to every believing female, irrespective of where they live on the globe. And beyond that, irrespective of whether they earn or don't earn, whether they have a lot, whether they have nothing at all, they have the opportunity of fasting. And subhanaka ya Rabb, embracing this fasting we see even from amongst those who don't have. So whilst they don't have a three or two or even one square meal a day, they make the niyyah of fasting during this month of Ramadan and they make then the niyyah of ending their fast at the time when the ending of the fast is signaled by the setting of the sun. So even those who don't have observed this as a sense of ibadah so that their deprivation, in a sense, or the scarcity of their resources becomes a means of seeking goodness and the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and then becomes a form of ibadah. Allah having sequenced the fasting for us according to the lunar calendar, like the telling of time for all aspects of our lives as Muslims, is part of how Allah gives us the greatest plea bargain ever. That for a person who has been fasting consecutively in the month of Ramadan for 36 years, they would comfortably be able to stand before Allah on Yom al Qiyamah and say, Oh Allah, I have observed the fast of Ramadan in every season that my life had allowed. Because we know that the month of Ramadan slips according to the Gregorian calendar by 10 odd days every year. So you would have fasted in the peak of winter as we did some years ago. And now subhanAllah, the fast commencing in, uh, call it the middle or the early portion, the second week of the month of April. And subhanAllah, in another three years, that would be in the second week of March. And beyond that, if we take a period of 18 years, we would be observing the fast in the months of October and November. So I hope you're managing to keep abreast of what I have attempted to share with you in terms of this plea bargain that you would have before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Two aspects. The slipping of the time for a person who lives in the same geographical area for some 36 years of their life as someone who has been observing fasting, number one. The second is the extremities of fasting in the warm months where the days are long and the nights are short. And on the other hand, the extremities of fasting in the cold months when the nights are long and the days are short. Allow us for the interplay between two great forms of ibadah and worship. The duration of the fast, which is what we're discussing, but also the amount of time that one can allocate to Qiyamul Layl, the observance of the night vigil, which we did mention. We'll speak about, inshallah, a bit later. How then? Do we present this idea of fasting to the young ones in our home? Be clear and make them know, as we had mentioned for us as adults, that this is not about dep deprivation. This is about self-mastery. If I have the ability to contain my hunger and my thirst for a set period of time every day over the 29 or 30 days of Ramadan, it means that when I find myself in a challenging circumstance of I may have the means, the money at hand, but none of the stores may be open, or I may be in a place of where I, I feel unsafe and I'm unable to go out into the marketplace and purchase food, 
the training of the month of Ramadan would allow me to still maintain my mental faculties to think, to function properly without being preoccupied by the pangs of hunger or thirst. And if we can share this sentiment to the younger ones in our homes at a level at which they understand using language and vocabulary that they are more comfortable with, they will take to this. I personally have seen this many a times in my life. When with other people my age, follow other walks of life during uh, the early and middle years of my education, so both primary and secondary education. And, you know, everyone is like, when can we get food? And subhanAllah, there's this level of sabr, perseverance, patience in myself as a Muslim and the other Muslims with me that we just smiled because we knew the training of the month of Ramadan that we had observed as little children had allowed us to say, Two more hours, three more hours without food. Inshallah, I'll manage easily. Because in Ramadan, sometimes I go without food for 10 hours or 12 hours. Allah, at the end of this period of fasting, has kept what for us? Allah has kept one of the greatest evenings. And that, subhanAllah, is the Eve of Eid, known as the Eve of Prize Giving. May Allah make it that we can embrace the month of Ramadan from the very beginning of it, through the entire month, knowing that we have the concept in some of our community as known as opibar, you know, when you reach the midpoint of the month of Ramadan and you're like halfway and now it's downhill, right up until the end when we reach this eve of prize giving. There is a beautiful facet of our deen in appreciating that the observance, the acknowledgement, the celebration of Eid comes at the end of the month of Ramadan. Allah is showing us that the concept of reward for anyone in any aspect of your life, not just the reward from Allah, but even the sense of fulfillment and gratification is after exertion, not before. And this you would find to be very different to how others observe the first day of every calendar year as New Year's Day, the beginning of a new year. But who knows how much of that year they would live to see and witness. Subhanak ya Rabbi. The concept of celebration in Islam is at the end, at the fulfillment. Now that you have done something, you have achieved something, you have toiled towards the achievement of something, now you are rewarded by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So what are some of the aspects that we would share drawing to a close surrounding how to approach this beautiful month of Ramadan? The first is make the niyyah. And you'll say, make the niyyah? Yes, make the niyyah now that you will fast this month of Ramadan. You're saying, but it's inevitable. I will as a Muslim every morning. For many of us, every evening before I retire to bed, I have been taught and schooled that we make the niyyah collectively as a family or sometimes collectively as those who attend Salat al-Taraweeh at the end of either our Taraweeh or our Witr. We recite the niyyah to fast the next day. That in its place. But make the niyyah because... Verily actions are judged, are rewarded by virtue of intention. So that also shows Allah a commitment and anticipation and enthusiasm, a zeal for the beautiful month that lies ahead. The month of Ramadan is synonymous with the Quran, known as Shahrul Quran, the month in which Quran was revealed, the month in which Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam did muraja and revision with each passing year as additional ayat of Quran were revealed, Jibreel alayhi salam would recite this to Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam would revise it and recite it back to Jibreel alayhi salam. It is a month that is synonymous as you've mentioned with Quran. Prepare yourself from now in terms of your recitation of Quran and how you're going to give time to that. In fact, we should have already from the beginning of the month of Rajab spent more time with Quran. If not, it's not too late. Even with the remaining 12, 13, 13 and a little bit days before the month of Ramadan, establish this regiment. The timing now for the five oqat of salah is going to be very similar to the month of Ramadan. A difference in only maybe approximately 15 minutes. So if we inculcate the routine of which time of the day, morning, afternoon or evening we're going to be reciting Quran, 
it will be easy to build this on, inshallah, once the month of Ramadan commences. Avoid any disobedience of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Free ourselves. We have just passed the evening known as the night of emancipation, Laylatul Bara'a, some two nights ago, when we had made peace with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We had sought forgiveness from Him. Why? Because the only impediment between the acceptance of our dua and us making the dua, what stands in the middle? The nature and the extent of our sins. If we had made peace with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then let us maintain a clean slate so that when we reach the month of Ramadan, inshallah, we reach it and we encounter it as pure as we could be. Be from amongst those who have a quest for goodness. What goodness? The goodness that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has kept in this month. Shahrul Ramadan alladhi unzila fihi al-Qur'an hudan lin-nasi wa bayyinatin min al-huda wal-furqan Allah mentions the month of Ramadan when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed the Qur'an. When we look at the ayat that speak about the month of Ramadan, when we look at the hadith and the prophetic traditions that speak about this month, then there's the, a realization that there is additional barakah that Allah has kept, not only in the bottom line and your purse and handbag and pocket, but no, also additional barakah in time. There's this nur, celestial light and effulgence that you would see in everything around you, in your homes, in the marketplace when you encounter other people who are fasting. And subhanAllah, we need to ready ourselves so that we can embrace this goodness. We had spoken about the oscillation, the changing between night and day. In some months when we observe Ramadan, some times of our life and the year, then the nights are shorter and the days longer. We still kind of in the position of where the days are shorter and the nights still have a little bit of length in them. That inshallah for the next few years. A big part of the month of Ramadan would be the time that we spend in observing the night vigil beyond just Salat al-Taraweeh. If you truly want to draw close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then in the dead of night, remember, write down, take out your mobile device and record this very important number. I hope you're all ready for it. So you've opened up a new contact card and you're ready to punch in the number. We'll get to the name later. The number is 222. Two, two. And if you're thinking this is a trick, no, it's not. What is this number 222? Two, two, two. two rakah of salah at some time early in the morning. Let's call it 2 a.m. And two fat, hot tears rolling down your cheeks as you raise your hands to ask from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for everything that you want is the one number that every mu'min, every mu'mina needs to have in their life. This, inshallah, will become that speed dial to resolving any challenge and any problem. The idea of embracing the hajjud regularly, diligently, conscientiously throughout this month. It's super easy. We all intend to fast every morning or every day during the month of Ramadan. And if we wake up just a few minutes earlier than it would take us to partake of our pre-fast meal, our morning meal, suhoor, we'd have the opportunity of observing tahajjud for a full month, subhanallah, with no change to our routine surrounding sleep, etc. And for those who Allah has bestowed with additional righteousness and Allah consciousness, they are in the regular practice already. Allah make us to be from amongst them, that they observe the hajjud throughout the year. May we also be blessed, inshallah, with that uh, benefit and that virtue so that we could call unto Allah as they do all the time. It's easier for us to start with the month of Ramadan and the good habits that inshallah we ingrain in this month, may they stay with us beyond. This is also a month in which du'as, we should give due attention to du'a. We spoke about the observance of Salat al-Taraweeh. 20 additional rakah as a practice of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the observance of Salat al-Taraweeh. 
and at the end lift your hands before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for what it is that you require on behalf of yourself, the inhabitants of your household, the people living in your community, those who attend the same masjid like you, and the broader ummah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. If possible, set inshallah a goal that during the last 10 nights of Ramadan, you will observe i'tikaf, whether male or female. Whether you have the ability of observing i'tikaf in the masjid or whether it be in some place where you worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in your home, but take out time to be in seclusion so that all the aspects that we had shared with each other surrounding mindfulness, inshallah, we can bring to the fore. This is also a month of spending. Spending on those who have less than us. And where does this originate from? One of the objectives of fasting is that it creates a sense of empathy, a sense of togetherness with those who have less. It's relatively easier to say, I know where you're coming from. But to the person who doesn't have provisions for meals every day, they like, you don't understand my reality. Observing the fast of the month of Ramadan allows you to confidently say, Yes, while Allah has given me the means which I'm grateful to, grateful for, I appreciate your pain, the pangs of hunger that you experience on a daily basis. When we go through the process of observing this fast of Ramadan, then when we see those who are in need, even before they have to stretch their hands, we are more readily and more willingly in a position to want to give. In fact, we will go out seeking such people. Make this a month in which you spend in the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And subhanallah, other than everything that we have spoken about, be of service to other human beings. Bring joy to your heart by the remembrance of Allah and bring joy to the hearts of other people by lightening their burdens and doing whatever little you can to make life more livable, more comfortable and more pleasant for all of the creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Start early. Start early with regards to this change of routine that we had referenced earlier on. Be from amongst those who pledge to Allah after the night of emancipation that I will not fall down the abyss and the slippery slope of the whispers of shaitan with regards to aspects that I had been involved in, entrenched in, in my life prior to this period. Use this Ramadan as a stepping stone to draw closer to Allah. And inshallah, each success of Ramadan to grow in our relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Evaluate every fast that you observe based on the fast of the day prior throughout the month of Ramadan. What are we saying? Is the fasting merely about stopping our intake of food and drink at a particular time and then resuming it at another time so stopping it at early dawn and resuming just after sunset no evaluate the quality of your fast did i wrong anyone with my speech did i harbor or entertain any evil thoughts in my mind did i bring harm or inconvenience to other any uh, any person muslim or non-muslim young or old evaluate the fast of each day based on the fast of the previous day. And subhanAllah, the spirituality, the fulfillment, the light-heartedness, that, and the carefreeness that you would be able to accrue from the month of Ramadan will grow day on day, up until you reach the grand climax that we had spoken about, which is the night of prize giving. I hope, inshallah, this few minutes that we've spent have been beneficial and give us some idea around the orient orientation of our minds and our approach to the month of Ramadan and each day within that particular month. Allahu Akbar. I close with referencing some homework for you to do in the comfort of your home. The surah number 73, the verse 20. Surah 73, Surah Al-Muzammil, the 20th verse, the final verse of Surah Al-Muzammil. Go and read this verse and the translation of the verse and in there apply it.
to the beautiful month of Ramadan and the approach to the month of Ramadan and start competing with each other to outdo each other for Allah's pleasure in accruing reward by virtue of sending forth all types of good deeds up until the next time Allah grants us the opportunity to chat to each other. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.